Well, uh, welcome back to the Critics Corner, everybody. I'm Andrew Branca with the Walks at the Sun, and I'm here with uh, Mr. David Dunn with South Lake Style Magazine. Uh, how are you doing today, David? Doing okay, man. Doing okay. Um, uh, it's the freaking weekend. It's all I can bloody hope for. Oh, man, I tell you. So, hey, I got a beef to pick with you, bro. The last few movies that we've done here, you've made me cry. You know, so I'm thinking your new nickname is Tear Jerker Dunn here. It's well, not my fault. It is your fault. I blame you. You make me sad and you make me cry. I, like, I, have, I have feelings that I don't want to feel anymore, bro. It's not cool. Literally, all the movies I'm picking are Best Picture nominees from the Academy Awards. So if you're going to blame anybody, blame the Oscars. Tear Jerker Oscars, not Tear Jerker Dunn. Yeah, tear jerker done. If I see you on a street corner, I'm throwing a tomato at you. You're gonna throw a tomato or peel an onion, make me cry as much as you do. Exactly. You're gonna feel my pain and wrath at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so th this week's film is actually a really good one, and I think out of the uh, bunch that have been nominated, I, I think this is one that is definitely worthy of uh, of of. Best Picture. I, I think it's a fantastic movie. It's called uh, Sound of Metal. You sound great. Yeah, right. What? You're telling me you weren't feeling it? You were in it. Hey, we, don't need to, we don't need to put them all out. I know, but we have to keep them. Your hearing is deteriorating rapidly. We'll come back. Till then, Lou, we just keep going, okay? No. Lou, no. let's play tomorrow. Let's see what it's like, okay? I'm gonna be like a click track. You can play to me. You have to understand your first responsibility is to preserve the hearing you have. I can't hear you. Do you understand me? I can't. I'm deaf. I'm deaf. I'm deaf. found a place. I think it's important that you stay here with us right now, Ruben. We're looking for a solution to, to this. Not this. I need you to wait for me, okay? You're it for me, Lou. You're my part. You're it for me, okay? You gotta wait for me. does keep moving it can be a damn cruel place but those moments of stillness Sound of Metal is uh, a drama directed by uh, independent filmmaker Darius Martyr. Um, the film stars Riz Ahmed as a metal rock drummer named Ruben Stone. Uh, he is uh, part of a duo with uh, himself and his girlfriend, Lou. Um, and while he's out, you know, touring, doing shows, banging on his drums, all that good stuff, he notices he can't hear anything anymore, which is a pretty big problem for a hard rock musician. Um, he had, later on finds out from a doctor that he has progressive deafness, basically uh, losing his hearing. Um, now he has to kind of adjust this new life he's living, um, you know, learn how to live life as a deaf person, um, learn how to live it without a very big passion of his life. And yeah, that's that's the movie. The movie is 
uh, basically learning to keep on living when you lose the things that kept you living up until that point. And uh, you mentioned uh, the, the, the Oscar nominees, Andy. Um, this is easily uh, one of my favorite Best Picture nominees so far. Um, the movie is so raw, real, visceral. Um, it's very intense drama, um, but it's also very sincere. And it, it amazes me that we really haven't had that many films on this subject, at least not many I can think of. Well, you know, the, the last uh, movie that actually won an Academy Award with a deaf actress was a, had Marley Matlin in it. It was a, I believe it was in 1986. It was called a Children of a Lesser God. And it, she won a Best Actress for that. And, you know, I've seen that. That's a great movie. A tre tremendous performance by uh, Miss Matlin. Um, what's interesting and what, uh, what I found interesting about this movie and it really connected with me uh, when I was in college uh, for my language uh, requirement I had to do basically 18 hours of a language and I didn't want to take Spanish because me and Spanish First, were yeah. long in high school I, I was really bad in Spanish I didn't want to do German but uh, my mom uh, knew sign language she had uh, used it at our church uh, occasionally for you know, some deaf people that had visited and she would do interpretations for that. So, you know, that really interested me. So I took two years of this and watching this film, they got a lot of stuff right in, in this movie. Um, what's interesting is the, the cultural aspect of the deaf community. They are very proud of being deaf. They don't think that being deaf is a handicap or a disability or anything like that. And that is definitely, there, there's a lot of pride about being deaf. It's like being proud of being like an American or being a person from Britain or, you know, there, there's a lot of pride in that. It's and ultimately it's, being prideful, being proud of who you are. So exactly, exactly. And um, there's, there's one, there might be a spoiler, but I'm going to do it anyways. The, this, uh, uh, drummer uh reuben you know he is a very conflicted person he he dealt with addiction with heroin he said he was clean for four years and then this gets thrown at him you know it's just i just to see that struggle that he's going through it felt very very real and it felt very honest what he was doing um i couldn't imagine going through something like that um, it yeah it it rattles ruben to the core in this movie and therefore you being the audience it also rattles you because it just to, to lose like that part of yourself especially when your career like your whole like life's passion is immersed in sound like i can't imagine what it means to be forcibly divorced from something like that um, you mentioned uh, uh, Ruben Stone in this movie, and I gotta say, Riz Ahmed, I knew the guy was a good actor before going into this. I've seen him in other movies before, uh, including Nightcrawler, uh, Rogue One, um, and he was excellent in all of those movies. But this is a transformational performance from him. I mean, he is just amazing as this drummer that is so scared to lose the things that he loves that he keeps clinging on to it even when he's hoping against hope. Like, I feel like this movie, in addition to portraying the deaf community, it also portrays uh, the five stages of grief very well. Yeah. Um, where, you know, a denial, bargaining, anger, sadness, you know, all that stuff until it comes to the end where, you know, resolution, acceptance. And you really see all those stages pretty viscerally here. And Riz Ahmed does a brilliant job um, expressing all of those moments when his character feels like he is in those moments. Well, and, you know, and I, I will say they, they did, like I said earlier, they did a tremendous job paying a lot of respect to the deaf community. You know, I'm not deaf. I'm not trying to speak for them or anything like that at all. But in, in film history, they have been treated very poorly. They've been made fun of, they've been laughed at, 
this was treated with, you know, at least in, in my view of that culture and society very respectfully. And, you know, it, it, it was just interesting watching how he goes from this, uh, this outgoing person where he kind of closes himself. And there's, there's one scene in real, really particular that, that got me is, a uh, he's given a task where he's supposed to sit quietly in a room with a notepad and just kind of write his thoughts about, I guess, what he's going through. And he just starts screaming and he starts yelling. He has a, he has a cup of coffee and a donut on the table and he just, he pounds the donut into crumbs and then he puts it back together, you know, in that ball. And then he pounds it again. He, he's just so, there's just so much anger in him about being kind of robbed in, in a way. And you kind of see that change take place where he goes from being this, this very angry person to being uh, accepting what has happened to him, how he's now, okay, this has happened to me. I've got to face my new normal here. And that is shown he, very well. Yeah. He's at peace with himself. And I, I, I agree. It's, it's, the movie does a wonderful job uh, uh, showing those different periods of Ruben's experience going through losing his hearing. Um, I did think that scene was amazing. Another scene I loved was where he was talking with uh, Paul Racy's character, which Paul Racy in this movie um, portrays um, the leader of the deaf community. He's a part of, you know, he uh, teaches Ruben. He kind of uh, brings him under his wing uh, kind of uh, educates him on what it's like to be deaf. And both of them are just conversing through sign language, um, but they're conversing about how they approach being deaf differently. Yeah. And it's amazing to see like Ruben still trying to cling on to his old normal versus Paul, um, not just being accepting of his new normal, but also, uh, um, uh, positively towards it. I mean, his life is that changed, but hasn't necessarily gotten worse. Um, when well, he also sees what Ruben can become. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that was another thing I loved about this movie. Like Andy, <laughs> it's so rare where I compliment a movie's sound editing and mixing because normally if a movie's good, you don't even recognize it. Yeah. Like it's it's an element in the movie, but this movie is very very vivid in its sound direction and i think it's so amazing it it in some parts you're look on the outside looking in on ruben struggling to hear words and repeat them um and then other times you're hearing from his perspective like all these distortions all these weird sound effects of this this muted uh kind of uh tone for everything around him it does a great job visualizing and expressing and audibly conveying what Ruben is experiencing. And wow. I, I think the movie does a great job portraying what the deaf community goes through. It's a very scary thing. Yeah. Well, it, it, like you said, you know, it just adds another layer to uh, the narrative and, you know, to take it from the movie's final tap, it takes it up to 11. I mean, it's, that is really just a fantastic way to bring that story uh, to life and to people who maybe don't know a deaf person or uh, are not deaf themselves. I mean, this is a great way to show what happens to a person if they, you know, because a lot of times some people are born being deaf. Some people have a uh, lose their hearing through an accident or through genetics, you know, you know, there's progressive hearing loss that some people have. And, you know, and that can you know, people can lose their hearing for a number of reasons. That can happen to anybody. And I think that really showcases that that can happen, how your life can change so dramatically. It, it really can. And that was another thing I, I liked, even, even in the movie's title. Like, even the movie's title has multiple meanings behind it. Like, whenever, you first, whenever the movie first opens up, he's just drumming out and he's having a rocker of a good time with his girlfriend. You think, of, oh, Sound of Metal, this is related to metal music, his musical genre. Then later on in the movie, he's interacting with kids and playing with the sound uh, that they hear on a metal slide. 
And then later on in the movie, again, uh, not getting into spoiler territory, but metal ties into even that scene as well. Like, it's amazing the dexterity and the layers that this movie has. And it's just, it's just so great at conveying uh, its messaging. I, I absolutely adore it. Oh, I thought it was great. You know, uh, you know when, when you said, oh, yeah, let's review Sound of Metal, I, I, I didn't know what this movie was about. I didn't know the premise. I just looked it up on Amazon. I was expecting something totally different and, and not this rare, great gem of a film. It's, it's, <laughs> it's truly just one of the really better films to come out of 2020. And the sad thing is a lot of people don't know about it. They haven't seen it. They, they just really need to dive into this story. They really do. And that's one of the few uh, positive points where I will uh, um, compliment award shows like the Oscars because the more notoriety movies like this gets, the more attention it gets. Maybe over the course of um, the next few years or so, this movie will go on to become even more adored and uh, uh, just kind of cherished as uh, this uh, 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 indie darling little gem. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very glad I watched the movie. I'm very glad um, I got to experience it. And I'm very glad I got to connect with this Ruben Stone character. It made me think a lot more about um, a silenced community, a community we don't think about that often, but we really, really should. Oh, definitely. And, you know, just watching some of the scenes where they're signing and stuff like that, it was interesting, you know, what... I learned, you know, how much actually, you know, have stayed with me and just, you know, having that connection in that sort of way. And, you know, I, I definitely encourage anybody to, you know, learn American Sign Language. Uh, it's a beautiful language. Uh, it's a beautiful culture. Uh, I just so highly encourage that. And just you know, open that lines up with the communication with, with deaf people. You know, they, they, they're just like anybody else. Um, but, uh, okay. Uh, we've definitely come to a spot where we need to give this film a rating. So one out of, uh, 10 stars, what, what do you give this here? Solid, solid, solid nine. The one thing that brings it down a little bit for me is I have mixed feelings about the ending. I think it was the right ending to end on. I just feel like it should have been done a little bit differently. Aside from that. Yeah. Brilliant movie. Genuine surprise. Riz Ahmed is amazing in the movie. I kind of want to root for him in the best actor category at the Oscars, but then that means he would have to beat Chadwick Boseman. And I'm not sure if I want that, <laughs> but, uh, but overall, yes, brilliant movie. Uh, if you have Amazon prime, you definitely need to check out this movie. Definitely check it out before no, you watch Nomadland. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would give it a nine as well. Um, like you said, the, in the ending, I definitely, felt was good and it was very appropriate. It did feel kind of Soprano-esque a little bit where they just kind of cut it off at the end, kind of a feeling. You know, you wish there was maybe a little bit more, you know, I kind of wanted to know what happened a little bit more to Ruben when he got back uh, to his home and how he dealt with things. But but I get why they ended it where... Uh, where they did because it sends just a powerful message. And yeah. And, and it relates to a piece of dialogue that Paul Racy shares with him earlier, but spoilers. <laughs> Go see this movie. It's, it's just, it's truly amazing. You won't be Absolutely. disappointed. Absolutely. Well, uh, that's going to do it for uh, this week of the critics corner. Uh, next week, hopefully we'll have something a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, <laughs> your jerker. Um, right? Lighthearted, funny, oh laughter, and such. You get to pick the movie next week. Good. Right? I'm glad the Oscars I, after that. Good. I'm glad I do get to pick the movie next week because <laughs> it's going to be something, something ridiculously funny. And then we'll get back to the Oscar stuff after we watch yeah. the other movie, which uh, I kind of need to need need to clear my mind a little bit. All this heavy situational stuff here. Golly, what are you doing <laughs> to me? Killing me, Smalls. Blame the Oscars. It is not me. <laughs> uh, I I don't know anybody with the Academy, and you're close by, so I can blame you. So that's how that's how I'm rolling with this. So, Carol Isaacs, where are you at? 
<laughs> well, that's going to do it for this edition of The Corner. So if you have any uh, questions, thoughts, concerns, uh, movies you want us to review on here, or if you want to talk movies with us, please feel free to send us an email, uh, reach out to us through Facebook, um, you know, I'll list a comment on any of the reviews below, and we will get back to you. So <laughs> that will <laughs> do it for this week's edition of The Critics Corner. Uh, take care, and we'll see you next week back right here, same time, same station. See you next week. <laughs>